Today, I would like to present you a French perfume house called Nicolai. It is not a world famous brand, but it is quite known among Parisians. I would like to thank Nicolai for personalized attention because when I ordered my discovery set, I requested a few samples and they did send it to me. Thank you. However, I would like to tell all my viewers that this is not a paid partnership and as always, I present my very, very personal and very honest opinion about the fragrances that I experience. When I made a decision to purchase this set by Nicolai, I realized that there's something I lied to you about. I told you that I never pay attention to bottles and packaging and in fact, this is not totally true. I have been avoiding the shops of Nikolai because the bottles and the image that they have created in my mind the idea that they only make very old-fashioned colognes and I have nothing to do in that shop. But the slogan of the brand is unique and timeless creations. So my journey became discovering this uniqueness. And I'll tell you what, one thing that I really loved is that Nikolai uses a lot of yuzu. And this is so refreshing compared to regular lemons and bergamots that you always find in fragrances. Also, I don't know what kind of vanilla they use, but this vanilla is something I've never had anywhere before. It is so voluminous and voluptuous and amazing. The old-fashioned colognes that I was telling you about are still the core of the collection. Let me read you the names of the perfumes that could probably be very good gifts for your grandfather. Incense Oud, Ambre Cashmere Intense, Number One Intense, New York Intense, and Patchouli Intense. I think they are very masculine, old-fashioned, cologne type of perfumes. The only one that I would like to mention is Ambre Cashmere. I could not handle it from the beginning, but when I smelled it on a blotter a few hours later, I discovered the most amazing vanilla base. Just listen to the complexity of the base notes. Vanilla Absolute, Labdanum Absolute, Benjoin Resinoid, Tonka Bean Absolute, Patchouli Essence, Sandalwood, Musk and Amber. But the combination with the vanilla in heart is just wow. I wish I could try it on a man. The category where I discovered the uniqueness of Nicolai is leather fragrances. Cuir Cuba. Cuban leather. I don't know why they decided to call it Cuban leather, because when I smelled it, the first thing that came into my mind is Turkish Raki, which is vodka with anise. Or it could be pastis from Provence. Depends how you see it, but there's definitely anise. What you do get in here is a lot of sunshine, very nice warm spices, eventually you get a flower of ilang ilang and a breeze of lavender fields, and then you get tobacco. But it's not a tobacco that comes from Cuban cigars, it's a tobacco leaves that are dried at sun. Kind of soft and addictive in a way. I personally don't get much leather in here, but at the end it smells like sunshine, a lot of sunshine to me. The second leather fragrance in the collection is called Baikal Leather. And this leather is also very complex. As you know, I first test the fragrances myself and only after I read the official description and the opinions of people on Fragranatica. I immediately get citruses and black pepper on the top. Saffron and some powdery notes are also recognizable in here. But when it comes to green freshness and spices, and leather accords and woodiness, that's where it gets really difficult. What I feel in here is the incense and smokiness of spices and woods. The perfume twin of Baikal leather would probably be Golden Green by Xerzhov. And it's very surprising actually because they have very different notes. What makes them similar is these warm and green spices, maybe even including green coffee beans. Another fragrance where I get leatherly vibes is called Vani Tonka. According to Nikolai, this is not a leather perfume. But for me, the incense essence together with Vani, Tonka and tobacco totally gives leatherly effect. And I really love it. The only thing I'm crying about is that it's not a fragrance that I could wear because of very strong cologne element. 
One of the most unusual fragrances I have recently tried is called fig tea. Here it is. Why is it unusual? Because normally we imagine the fig note to be associated with a fresh fruit and we kind of know the way it smells and fragrances. Here it's totally different. I have dried fig and I have a cup of tea. I put this dried fig in my tea and I let it soak for 15 minutes. Hot tea. 15 minutes later, I take it out and that's the smell you get in this fragrance. As for tea lovers, I'm afraid they would be a bit disappointed because fig tea does not have a beautiful mate note that you might be expecting. Asmantus and fig soaked in tea, that's what you get in here. And I was feeling that there's something lacking in this fragrance and I was searching for something to mix it up with. So I decided to pair up fig tea with Le Mixte. Uh, which is uh, very dominated by citruses. There are lots of citruses in here. A little bit of spiciness and vetiver. And these two, surprisingly, work so well together. They don't dominate one over the other. They really blend in and create something unique. Individually, each fragrance is unisex, but the mix, I think, is more feminine. They make the sweetness of fig and flowers come out and open up so well on my skin. Mixed water by itself is made for lovers of citruses and these citruses are complemented with fresh herbs and grass and an interesting note of juniper berries. This one, together with uh, Riviera Verbena, I think they make wonderful refreshing summer fragrances. And unlike many other fragrances of Nicolai, I would say that Le Mixed and Riviera Verbena are very bright perfumes that would really be appreciated by younger generation. The most feminine one in the set is probably Musk Intense. And here we have Pear, Roses and Musk. And indeed this fragrance is very musky, despite that you can feel a light, light touch of amber in here. The thing is that for me, despite that this is not an intense fragrance, it sounds a bit like an old-fashioned kind of musk. The roses here are not very bright, it's just a little touch of roses, more like rose petals, I would say. So despite that it's called Musk Intense, it's actually a very delicate kind of fragrance. And it's a kind of smell that I've already smelled so many times. I really imagine an older woman in her 70s and 80s, very well dressed, real Parisian of Rive Gauche, and that's a kind of smell that I would really associate with that image. Surprisingly, the other feminine perfume called Capneroli is not that old-fashioned. For women who love brighter roses, I would say that the fragrance called Roses and Peonies is a much more appropriate choice. Because here, the peonies are on the background and the roses are really blooming. But I'm personally not a big fan of roses and this would not be my choice. The one that I really loved myself was not a part of the set and was sent to me separately. This one is called Kiss Me Intense and I went crazy for this fragrance. I really love the combination of almonds, heliotrope and vanilla. This is a kind of combo that probably goes for me under any scenario and in here this is something else. It is just so good. Here we are dealing with a bitter kind of almond and it is complemented so well with heliotrope and there's a lot of heliotrope in here. And the sweetness is coming from so many sources that vanilla is not the brightest in here but you can definitely feel it. And despite there are no bananas in here, it kind of reminded me of this shower gel. It's called Banana Shake and it smells like green bananas that are not ripe yet. And there's something in common between this fragrance that does not even have bananas in here and cottage shower gel. I usually wear them together and they smell and radiate of my skin so lovely, especially in the summer. After getting acquainted with Nikolai, I've realized that their tradition and innovation, they're split in a way. Because on one hand, they have people who are faithful to their perfumes and have been wearing them for decades. 
And on the other hand, they have fragrances that are very young and they are made to please a new generation. Meanwhile, the use of materials and staying faithful to quality result in really beautiful fragrances. Unfortunately, the Discovery set does not include even half of their perfumes, but this has already awakened my curiosity and I think I will try to pass by their shop to check out a few more. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know if you know this perfume house and if you have any favorites in here.